As a result of not playing CSGO for a long time period, I lost my rank. After 10 solo queue matches, I got a Gold Nova rank. I played 10 matches in Gold Nova and I've seen all these mistakes from my teammates. This video will contain a lot of tips that are very useful for higher ranks as well, as some people just forget some basic rules which impact their game greatly even though they don't even know it. The video timeline will be in description. Improper peeking. My teammates died time and time again by improper peeking, mostly against sniper rifles. If you are inexperienced, you will probably not know the most common opping positions on the map and therefore you will not expect an opper. If you go over all maps you play and check out where oppers are commonly positioned, you will make your life much easier. As soon as you anticipate where an opera could be, you can simply shoulder peek him to bait out a shot. After that, you have a piece of vital information also for your mates, as this info helps them to decide how to play the round. Some teams rather go to a different bomb site than to face snipers in face to face combat. Sooner or later, of course, you will have to face them anyway. This can be done with a variety of options. The only thing you don't want to do is dry peek. Peeking without grenade support against an opper is most times suicidal, putting yourself to a huge disadvantage. Against snipers, peeker's advantage is close to none. If you have no nades, your only option is to shoulder peek and hope to out-aim your opponent. If you have utility, on the other hand, you can use your knowledge to pop flash him, smoke him out of position or even throw a molotov there to force him to move. You wanna peek him while he's moving and surprise him when he doesn't want to be surprised. After my time off, I made a few mistakes as well because I just forgot a few tricks that are overpowered against lower ranks when used correctly. If you are smurfing, just trying to get the rank back like me, you might be confident enough to just go for pure skill 1 vs 1 encounters as you expect to win them based on pure better aim and reflexes. But this strategy can only work for a limited amount of time. If you do this every round, they might start stacking on you and putting you in hard situations against multiple opponents, which you will not always be able to win. That is the reason why playing unpredictable is so important. You always want to keep mixing your playstyle throughout the match. One round you should be aggressive, maybe even dry peeking to try to go for a surprise and another round play slow and strategic. I've noticed that this play switching can really throw CT teams off balance and end the match quickly. Not using opportunities to your advantage. This is something barely anyone talks about, but in my opinion an incredibly important topic. By using opportunities, you can get multiple kills every match. Those kills are sometimes so important that they win you the match or not. By using opportunities, I am referring to getting kills while your opponent is reloading, moving or rotating. This relies heavily on your game sense. But it happens at least once every match that I catch someone reloading and get a free kill. Most people don't even hear reloading as their game volume is too low or their settings might be incorrectly set. The right headset also plays a small role in how well you can hear the enemies. This is also important for peeking. The best possible moment to peek an enemy is when they are moving. They will be harder to hit, yes, and nearly impossible to pre-fire, but if you pick them while they are running, that will place you in a big advantage. If you can back up that peak with good aim, you get yourself a kill, most times without receiving any damage. Planting the bomb. I know that this knowledge is not new, but I have to repeat it. It doesn't matter if the round is over, or if you're too late to plant the bomb in time, or whatever situation you're in. If you have the opportunity to plant the bomb, do it. Every player in your team will get a significant reward for that, and be sure not to forget this. I don't know why, but many people tend not to plant it. Just do yourself and your team a favor and plant it. By planting, you also get a few points on your match score, so it's worth it. Playing for fun. I know some of you guys are not interested in ranking up and you just play for fun. I actually encourage that, but at the same time it confuses me. Because 
every few matches I get two or three guys in the team who are friends and kind of play lightly, not really serious. They go into weird encounters with enemies, maybe rush with P90s or similar. I'm sure this happens all the time, but it does kind of bother me. If you don't care about ranking up, go play scrims or classic. The moment you get into a competitive match, make sure that your objective is to win the match. Not to be the top fragger, not to get a few clutch rounds or to get an ace or whatever, but to win the match. I noticed this because after you have a better game sense, you can easily be the bottom fragger and still the hidden MVP of the match. Teamwork always was and always will be the number one skill of Counter-Strike. Playing in Gold Nova, I was the utility guy every match. Watching the stats after the game, most players had small utility damage and close to none enemies flashed, while I was the guy who supported the team with flashes, smokes and grenades. It might seem a waste of money, but a team without utility support will have a hard time winning rounds. That is why I advise you to learn how to use a utility effectively by using only the necessary. Don't randomly throw smokes and flashes just because you have them, but use them with meaning. Before throwing a flash, ask yourself what that flash is for and how will it help you to win the round. If you're supporting a rush, make sure you are not flashing your own team. If you're not sure if you should flash or not, just don't. Using wrong weapons on wrong positions. Right now the AUG has become very popular, but players who use it still make many mistakes with it. Scoping in close combat with the AUG is just straight up stupid. When someone will peek you, you will have to move your mouse double the amount as if you were unscoped. If you have high sensitivity, that can kind of work, but most times this will just make your response time longer and you will probably die. In close combat, always play unscoped or just don't use this gun. Similar goes for sniper rifles. Before even buying an op, you have to know your exact spot where you will use it. If you buy an op first and then think about what you'll do with it, it's a recipe for disaster. Use sniper rifles as much to your advantage as you can. That means you should play the maximum distance possible. That will make you a smaller, harder target to hit and you will be able to use the scope to its maximum potential. Close combat with an op is just the last resort when every other option fails. If you are very confident in your no scope skills, you can go for it, but mostly I recommend switching to a rifle or using your pistol. Warming up. This has been talked over thousands of times probably and this is a big factor in how you will perform in game. I did a test where I played 5 games of competitive 5 days in a row without warming up and then 5 games with 30 minutes of warm up on workshop aim maps. I think it can be said without a doubt that my performance was much better in matches with warm ups. My kills were close to doubled, my headshot percentage was much higher and I was also much more confident because I knew I was prepared for the game. That's why this is now my routine when playing competitively. Always before the first competitive match of the day, I warm up and it's even proven to help immensely. Getting this correct routine is especially important because when you get to legendary eagle rank and higher, you absolutely must warm up. From my experience in Supreme and Global, playing without warm up in such a high level group of players will never end well, unless you get absolutely carried to win. Auto buying on CT side. Unlike the terrorist side, the counter terrorists don't always require the full buy. On the terrorist side, the auto buy gives you an AK and full armor, while on CT side, you will get full armor, M4 and a kit. When the T side has a full buy, they will rarely have a gun that is not a one hit headshot kill. That means using the helmet on the CT side is not necessary every round. The lower the rank you play in, the less chance you have to get killed by a headshot. That means that you can sometimes save money by not buying a helmet. 
the diffuse kit is also included in the autobuy and is not always necessary. If you see that bomb is rarely planted, as sometimes this is the style the T side plays, then three kits on the team are more than enough. Having one kit on each bomb site is technically enough already. When you are struggling with money, make sure to think about these things. You can also be light on grenade purchases if they are not needed and save up some more money. When you do have enough money for a full buy, go for it. If you're good with SMG weapons, don't be afraid to use them as well. This will give you a bigger kill reward and will be cheaper to buy as well. Sometimes it's better to buy a worse weapon and more utility. If you want tips on your play, you can send me your demo link to my email which can be found in the description. I wish you all the success in your upcoming matches and may we meet in global ranks one day. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all next time.